Hello, I'm Dr. John Iskander. Welcome to CDC Beyond the Data. I'm here today with Mickey Duran, Health and Human Performance Program Lead for the Appleton School District in Wisconsin. Welcome, Mickey. Hi, thank you for having me, John. So at today's Public Health Grand Rounds on Prevention of Childhood Obesity, you gave a fascinating talk called The Health and Academics Connection. So briefly, what is that connection and how have you worked to implement that in the Appleton School District? I think as I said in my presentation that, you know, when we talk about public health and we talk about academics, uh, those two worlds don't typically collide. Uh, the schools are really worried about their academic outcomes. Uh, we're worried about health and, you know, the impact to the community and society where we are in the schools looking to create citizens and we're looking to create healthy citizens. I think one of the statistics where we talk about um, that wasn't in there, but we talk about how kids are not potentially might not outlive their parents. And we think about that in schools, how that's really a tremendous statement. You think about all of the scientific uh, advancements that we have made and that that is not going to overcome what they're doing physically to their bodies. So even if I, they become the best scientists, if we're creating Albert Einsteins and we're creating all these other people that have the knowledge, but they don't have the ability to enjoy that life, they're not going to be able to influence our culture the way that we want. So it is how those two things come together. And I think, you know, when looking at the data that I presented, when we talk about how um, it does impact how kids think, how they move, it's very important, the physical activity that they have, how it gets their brains ready to move, how it helps them emotionally to be more stable, um, to be more present in classrooms. It reduces behavior. I think if you talk about anybody in schools right now, they'll talk about behavior issues that they have with their students. But it's really because it goes back to their physiological uh, way that they're just not prepared to be at school or to listen. And I think that when schools understand that there is that connection and that we do need to make sure that we're providing a healthy environment for them, um, that it helps them and the students to be better. So they do work together. Um, so you said, and, and the approach you've taken, uh, as shown in your talk, really kind of a very CDC way, you started gathering some data uh, on all different grades, really from K, K through 12. Mm -hmm. What did that data show and, and what kind of actions did that lead to in the schools? Uh, so we were a part of a study with our Department of Public Instruction. And we, you know, looking from the data that you produced, it says that kids really are um, too sedentary. So they wanted to go out and quantify that. So using the accelerometers, we put uh, accelerometers on our students so we picked homerooms and the elementary the middle school and high school and we had them wear it for a week and the whole time that they were in school so we could actually quantify how much they were actually moving in school and that's where we learned where the kids were active that recess is where most of the students get a lot of their activity in the elementary day um, it's sporadic where we talk about active classrooms that means how do we get the kids up so that they're better ready to move um, in the middle school and high school, we found that their greatest uh, place that they got activity during the day was during their passing times between classrooms. And so that has an impact on their academics, it has an impact on their emotional um, output. So that was very uh, interesting data that was revealed in that study. And I think one of the actions that was taken, right, was to really much more promote this idea of the, the fit the fit classroom. Could you just describe for us a little bit kind of what that looks like and, and who's involved in implementing that? Um, when we talk about the fit classroom, one of the things I talked about was fit in 15. And I think it's just really how we're, and when I talk about that, it's how that we try to make kids so that they're ready to learn. Um, the more vigorously physical active that they are, the better that their brains are ready to learn and understand what's going on. So we try to make sure that we have opportunities that are built in for our teachers, that they can go and get their kids vigorously active for two 15-minute segments in addition to their physical education time. The other thing that we really work on, which is called active classrooms, right? So there's a certain point, like even if we're sitting here or somebody's listening to this and it's past 19 minutes for an adult, they're not going to pay attention to anything that we're saying, no matter how great we're doing it. And that's just that their brains are closing down or powering down, as I tell other people, like your phone has that time. That's what their brains do. So we need to make sure we talked about active classrooms that we're getting them up, that their brains sort of turn back on so that they can understand the information that you're telling them. So it helped us to provide that information and said, if these kids are sitting this long, their, their 
like their phones, they're shut off, they're in power mode, so there's not a lot of information that's going in. So it helps them to regulate, and then that's how we pass that information along. And those are the strategies, obviously, yeah. that the CDC promotes. Yeah, and I, I thought in your presentation you really did a great job of integrating real-world data from your schools, information that we've learned from, from neuroscience about the, the, the mental benefits of physical activity, and again, that idea of really involving not just the PE teachers, but really the whole, the whole faculty in that. Um, mm -hmm. I wonder if you could talk also a little bit about some of the ways that you've led your school district in involving uh, families and the community in, in physical activity and nutrition. So we, we actually do have this long standing, it's called Education for Healthy Kids. Uh, and we know that if we don't engage uh, the full community that we're not gonna be successful. So the way that we view all of our schools are kind of like a family. So if we're a family and uh, you come over to my house for Thanksgiving, it's like we will we'll enjoy the same kind of food. It's a little bit different, but we can talk the same language. And we think of our schools that way too, so that they know exactly when they're reaching out to their community, what their parents are gonna be like, what their students are gonna be like. So that's where we offer a lot of uh, different activities that are designed for their communities, whether it's a family fun night where they come in and open up their gyms where they invite the families in, uh, pumpkin runs, walks. Uh, we offer, there's just so many different things that they do for them that way. And then we also offer ways for students to connect, whether it's through intramurals, um, uh, ski clubs, walk clubs. I think one of the most interesting things that we do, we've also partnered with the community is called, there's a variety of them, but there's a couple that stand out. One is family dinner night. Um, we know that if the family eats together, that alone, you know, increases nutritional value in the home, or reduces a lot of at-risk behavior. So we partnered with, it's called the Weight of the Valley in our area, where that's a, a statewide obesity network. Um, but they work with us and that we work with them, that they help fund so that we can bring in nutritionists, they bring in a chef, and we get our families together at our different schools and they teach them how to prepare a meal. Uh, and then they understand the health benefits and then the benefits of eating together. So that's one example of how we do some community things with our, our area. Yeah, I mean, I think those are both great examples of, again, ta taking the resources available to mm -hmm. the school or physically at the school mm -hmm. uh, on both of those things. So uh, maybe we could conclude um, just by, uh, again, bringing it back to putting this all, again, in the context of, of prevention of, of childhood obesity. And, and in your view, how does this all connect together? I think that it connects together because I think it's the best way for us to really get to the families. Um, I know that when we, when we always do these programs that people say, make sure that you're doing outreach for families. When you do specific outreach for families, our numbers are always really low, but we make sure that we're educating the child and the child has to go home and then they talk to their families. That's where we've seen the biggest change in behaviors at home it also, if we do activities and things, you know, families want to come see what their kids are doing. So I think that school connection is a way for us to really, in a meaningful way, educate what's going on at home. I think that then it also builds that foundation, which, which we hope for in all academic areas, that we're building kids with knowledges, behaviors, and attitudes uh, about how to live a healthy life. And um, I think that one of the mantras that we talk about in our district is like, how do you make healthy cool? right, as cool as a pair of jeans that day or, you know, whatever the app is. How do you make that cool, that that is the best thing to do? And I think that that comes through the culture that hopefully gets created in the schools. It's not just whether it's a policy or that you do this, but it's like, why are we doing it? And I hope that we are doing a good job of saying why we're doing it and that that is what impacts our community. Well, it's to me, it's been really very inspiring yeah. to see that. And um, again, thank you very much for, for sharing your work with us in this forum and in, in Public Health Grand Rounds. Please join us next time for Beyond the Data.